Board round, session number 28. The moment you step foot on campus as a medical student, you are gearing up for one of the biggest tests you'll ever have to take, USMLE Step 1 or Comlex Level 1. The medical school headquarters and board vitals are going to help you prepare for your first board exam with questions, pearls of information, and guidance to make sure you have what it takes to score high and match into your specialty of choice. Welcome to Board Rounds. My name is Dr. Ryan Gray, your host here every week. As always, I'm joined by the wonderful Karen Shackelford, Dr. Karen Shackelford from Board Vitals. As we're recording this, I got to go meet Karen in person, have lunch with the Board Vitals team, and check out their office. Great team over there doing lots of amazing things. So stay tuned for some awesome stuff coming from Board Vitals pretty soon. If you are preparing for your US Emily Step 1 or Comlex Level 1, go to boardvitals.com and check out how they can help you prepare for your exam. If you use the promo code board rounds, all one word, then you can save 15% off of their QBanks. Their most popular is their three month version. They have over 1700 questions. All of their questions are being revamped, redone, getting better explanations with some videos and so much more. I'm excited for everything that Board Vitals is up to. Again, go to boardvitals.com, use the promo code board rounds to save 15% off. You can also, once you're in medical school, they have all of the QBanks and questions and preparation for your shelf exams as well once you're in your clinical rotations third and fourth year. So check them out when you're at that stage of the game as well. Let's go and jump in and let's talk about some transplant medicine. Karen, back for some more board rounds. How are you today? I'm great. I hope you're well too. I'm doing well. Thank you. Um, we had an easy kind of give me last week with some good, uh, some good key takeaways. I hope we have some, another easy one for me today. Okay. Let's see what we got. What do we have? All right. We have some, um, uh, urinary pathology. Okay. So, a patient with a history of kidney failure as a result of multi-cystic kidneys has an allograft kidney transplant. Two months later, she presents with fever, malaise, and tenderness in the graft region. Her lab work shows a rise in creatinine. What other finding is characteristic of her condition? Hypotension? Decreased graft size on ultrasound? Patchy mononuclear cell infiltrates without tubulitis, urinary obstruction, or oliguria. Oh, what was answer choice C? Patchy mononuclear cell infiltrates without tubulitis. Patchy mononuclear. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, and oligouria was, was answer choice E? Oliguria. Um, all right. So we have a transplant patient. So that's always fun. Two months later, fever, malaise, tenderness in the graft region. So my immediate re kind of response is, okay, this is graft versus host, I'm assuming, uh, or host versus graft um, uh, with rejection going on. So hypotension i don't know decreased graft size potentially if if the graft is being attacked by the body it may want to <laughs> shrivel up and die um answer choice c i don't remember that at all uh urinary obstruction i don't know uh what that would have to do with anything um i mean potentially do, would you see urinary obstruction with uh, the host versus graft? Maybe. I don't remember. Uh, and then oligouria, I don't think so. Um, so I'm, I'm between B and D because I don't remember C at all. Um, but I'm going to go with B just because this is a, right, this is a... Uh, a transplant and my assumption is something's going on with that transplanted kidney. And so this is the answer choice that kind of fits with that. 
Okay. So uh, your choice is where did you say between D and D? I was between B and D and I went with B as in boy. Okay. So the answer actually was E, Oliguria. Oh, okay. And it wasn't a uh, graph versus has a cute graph rejection. Okay. Um, so uh, the Oliguria is a frequent finding. She has fever, malaise, graph tenderness. And some patients can actually be asymptomatic during the, their acute renal transplant rejection. They usually have hypertension, so that's why A is wrong. Uh, the graph may actually be enlarged on ultrasound. Creatinine generally only rises when there's significant histologic damage. And when uh, if the graph rejection progressed, we can assume there would be fibrosis and that the uh, you would have a decreased uh, graph size, but not at this point. Oh, okay. At the point, uh, patchy mononuclear cell infiltrates without tubulitis. That occurs in patients. That's a pathological description of something that occurs in patients who have a normal functioning renal allograft. So the histopathological findings uh, in patients with rejection might find uh, might have findings of interstitial infiltration with mononuclear cells, sometimes eosinophils, and the tubular basement membrane uh, will be disrupted by these infiltrating cells. That's called tubul that's what tubulitis is. And along with intimal arteritis, it's, it's considered the primary lesion of acute cellular rejection. Something that probably somebody taking the USMLE one would probably know, remember much better than either of us at this point, um, since we neither one of us are nephrologists. <laughs> uh, but, but anyway, so there you go. Um, acute antibody mediated rejection is characterized by a vasculitis uh, with neutrophils in the glomerular and peritubular cap capillaries fibrin, thrombi, or necrosis, and then there's interstitial hemorrhage, uh, the presence of CD4, and antibodies specific to the donor suggest an antibody-mediated reaction. And then in chronic allograft dysfunction, you'll see peritubular basement membrane splitting and multi-layering of the basement membrane. So, um, yeah, that um, there's more. If you want to go into more about the antibody mediated uh, rejection, yeah, let's do that. It's an autoimmune response. Uh, it occurs as antigen antibody complex fixes complement and with activation of multiple complement protein. C4D is a component of the normal complement pathway. It's split in, when C4 is split into C4A and C4B. C4B then is converted to C4D, which binds covalently to the endothelial basement membrane and the collagen uh, basement membrane. In the normal kidney, C C4D can be found in the glomerular mesangium and at the vascular pole. But the excessive production of immune complexes or immune complex deposition disease results in accumulation in the glomerular capillaries. And uh, the CD4 deposition can be seen by monoclonal antibody staining and frozen tissue immunofluorescent. Peritubular uh, capillary staining is useful in just renal allografts. And I'm trying to think, in acute allograft rejection, the graph may appear, okay, so this is B, may appear enlarged. Uh, we already talked about the urinary obstruction D is not the mechanism of oliguria in patients with renal allograft rejection. Well, that's pretty much it. There's a lot of um, a lot of material on that one. A lot of info on that one. So let me ask a follow up question for you. So um, if I can answer it, yeah. The kind of path that I was going down was this decreased graph size, and it looks like I was on the right kind of thought process, but this was more acute rejection versus something that happens a little bit later. So what's what's kind of the definition? Do you have that there of, of what is considered acute um, rejection? Yeah. So acute. Okay. So, um, well, you mentioned graph versus host disease, right? Yeah. That's an immune... That's an immune condition that occurs immediately after a transplant procedure. Okay. 
uh, when the immune cells from the donor attack the recipient patient's host tissue. Yeah. So that's like a different entity altogether. Then we'll move along to like, what is acute, acute rejection of cell? Well, that goes in the, I guess, other direction. Okay. And it's characterized by oliguria, fever, malaise, and graft tenderness. And so you're having this big, you're having an inflammatory reaction. And my guess, and I'm not 100% sure, but I, um, I am fairly sure that when you have chronic rejection, that like anything else, you develop, um, you know, fibrosis, that is yeah. significant tissue damage yeah. from chronic inflammation. But there's, and, there's uh, no specific timeline that it says is acute versus chronic. I think it's after the first year, the most common cause of graft failure after the first year is an incompletely understood entity <laughs> called chronic rejection. <laughs> so yeah. There is a classification system and it's called the BAMP classification system and um, chronic allograft nephropathy, which I guess is chronic rejection, is characterized by interstitial fibrosis, like we said, and tubular atrophy. Okay. But generally not any evidence of specific etiology. Well, I mean, I guess it's um, chronic immune, you know, thing going on from the rejection. Other than that, though, I can't tell you, but I promise you we'll get back to this subject. <laughs> All right, so there you have it. Again, go check out boardvitals.com. Use the promo code BOARDROUNDS to save 15% off. Hope you have a great week. We'll see you next time here on Board Rounds. This is MedEd Media.